Good morning and welcome back guys and ladies. Welcome back to this channel. Welcome back to All Things Gumball. Uh, as I said in a couple of other videos, I used to weigh tables and I want to share something with you guys. I was reading something on the internet about uh, prioritizing your work. Um, and it was, it was, it was, a, it was an article that was trying to get you to focus on what's important, ignore the things that are not important. And I want to use an example of when I used to wait tables. I want to give you an example of what I would do when I would wait tables. I'm, I, I think most people are caring in some respect. You know, most people care about other people in some respect or another. You know, you have people that are way uh, more giving and generous, like, you you know, let's take Mother Teresa for an example. Um, and then you have people like, let's say, even like Hitler or Mussolini. And maybe they don't care about everybody, but they care about the people that are in their circle. You know, the, they care about the people that are in their tribe. When I used to wait tables, I was always wanting to be helpful. And sometimes the restaurant would get so busy, like on Mother's Day. I remember working Mother's Day. And believe it or not... Let me let me share with you a little bit about Mother's Day. Mother's Day is the busiest day of the year in restaurants or for restaurants. Nobody wants to cook for their mom because mom does the cooking and mom's an expert. Everyone loves mom's cooking, right? For the most part. Everyone loves their mother's cooking and everyone thinks to themselves, I can't compete with mom. This is what my theory is. This is my theory. Who can compete with mom? So, I don't want to cook for mom, but let me take her to a restaurant and let someone else who's a chef, who's a prepared, you know, a, a professional, uh, trained chef, let me have her or him uh, cook for my mom, you know. So, of course, every restaurant is packed and everyone has these high expectations that it's going to be a wonderful day for mom and they forget the fact that everyone goes to the restaurant on Mother's Day. And you have to wait a long time to get a table. Maybe they run out of butter or they run out of sugar or they run out of who knows what, lemons for the tea. Or they run out of iced tea or they could run out of all kinds of things that you had your heart set on. Maybe you had your heart set on Eggs Benedict and they run out of eggs. So everybody goes to you know restaurants on Mother's Day and it's packed and everyone's angry. They're expecting to have a wonderful time because they want to celebrate their mom, the mom who raised them, the mom who loved them. And they end up having these real high expectations, and the restaurant doesn't deliver the high expectations, so they're very disappointed. Now, I always tell people, um, have very low expectations. And then if those low expectations are not met, then it's a positive experience. If you have an if you have a high expectation, let's say even like a movie. If everyone says this is a great movie, and you go to see the movie with high expectations, you may be very disappointed because it doesn't match your expect your expectations. If you go to a movie that everyone says is a wonderful movie, and just tell yourself this is going to be a crappy movie, it's going to suck, and it won't and it won't suck, you know, because everyone loves it. Uh, but if you tell yourself this is going to be a crappy movie, then when you go see the movie, you won't have high expectations, and it'll overpass your expectations. When you go out for Mother's Day, expect the worst. Expect to be waiting in line f for a long time to get a table. Uh, expect that your waiter is going to ignore you for most of the e you know most of the meal. Expect that they're going to run out of food. Expect that there's going to be a lot of screaming kids. And just expect the worst. When I was a waiter, I would have my section, and usually you get three or four tables, or maybe more if you're in a slower, you know, if you're in a restaurant that is run by a mom and pop ownership. But a corporate business will like, you know, they'll have set rules where you can't have more than three or maybe more than four tables. Because they know most waiters can't handle more than four on average. I, I remember working one restaurant and they gave me eight tables and it was fantastic. And and I was a seasoned waiter. I mean, I've been waiting tables for 10 years, so I knew a little bit about waiting tables. And I could handle 
uh, eight tables. It was a lot of work. I was constantly running back and forth and back and forth. But you learn some tricks of how to be, you know, how to wait on eight tables. And if you want, I can share those with you guys. But what I found myself doing when I was working in this one restaurant, and I and I started thinking differently. I I I'd, I'd go back in the kitchen and I'd see there's no lemons cut for the tea. So I'd go get a big bucket of lemons out of the cooler, and I'd start cutting lemons. And 15 minutes later, I figured, okay, I'm done cutting lemons. Let me go check on my tables. And when I go back out there. My tables are angry because I've ignored them for 15 minutes. Or polishing silverware. Sometimes the dishes, uh, you know, you'd get the dishes out of the dish area, the clean dishes, the, the silverware, and the silverware has to be polished. You have to sort through the silverware, and if it's dirty, run it through again. And sometimes they run the silverware through the machine three times or so. And you have to sort through it and, and make sure that it's not got any spots or you know, food particles or anything. And if it is, you throw it back in the dish pit and send it through again. And then you've got to polish it. The ones that are clean, you got to polish, make sure there's no water spots. And you can spend 15, 20 minutes just polishing silverware back in the back, ignoring your tables. And when you'd come back out to the tables, you would notice that they'd be angry because you ignored them for so long. Maybe they needed iced tea or they need their bill or whatever. They need to get out of there. So what I started doing was I started prioritizing my work at the restaurant. And I think you need to do that in any business. You need to figure out what is most important when you're waiting tables. And what is most important is taking care of the customers, making sure the customers are happy. So what you need to do if you're a waiter, run around to all your tables, check and make sure everybody's fine. Go back in the kitchen, cut some lemons, polish silverware, you know, do whatever fold napkins or whatever, and then spend two minutes or three or maybe five at the most, and then go back out and check your tables, make sure everybody's fine. Just prioritize. In the vending business, you want to do the same thing. You want to, you want to service your customers. Your customers, you want to make happy. If they call you up and they say the machine is jammed, you know, there's a quarter stuck, there's, you know, the, the dollar bill validator is, is not working properly. Try to make it... Um, the most important thing you do. Try to make it so that it's the most crucial thing that you do before you do anything else. Drop everything you're doing and head over there and make the customer happy. You may have a you may have a Coke machine or a snack machine where the Dollarville validator doesn't um, validate. It doesn't. It can't take the dollar bills, or it's not spitting out change, or or maybe or maybe the credit card reader doesn't work. Go, and it, it may be a very good location that makes you a lot of money. Don't ignore those locations. These are your priorities. This is what you need to focus on. Go out there, check the machine, figure out what's going on, fix the machine, and then move on to your other tasks that you have planned for the day. All right. Uh, this is the video of the day, and I will be making another one tomorrow, I guess, if I can. I am very busy with my life, and uh, I do want to make more videos, but uh, work kind of is my priority. So anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. If you like these videos, give a thumbs up, and if you really like these videos, please subscribe. And I will catch you on another video. Have a good afternoon. Have a good morning. Have a good evening.